triangles. So we're using the formula area of a triangle equals a half BC sin A, which you'll notice is also on your formula sheets. Um, so you might be used to using area equals half base times height or base times height over two. And that works fine when you've got a right angle triangle. But this particular formula is when we're doing um, work with non right angle triangles. So let's first of all try by proving the area of a triangle first. So I'll just show you a little proof behind why this formula, half BC sin A, actually works. And to do the proof, we're going to use just the general area of a triangle is half base times height. And we'll also be doing a bit of Sokotoa to prove that this formula is correct. Um, so what's the general formula for the area of a triangle? You probably know already that it's half base times height. Or you might have also said base times height divided by 2. That's OK as well. Um, now let's derive the formula ourselves um, for half area equals half BC sin A. Um, so that we understand where it comes from. So now let's consider the non-right angled triangle below. So this formula half BC sin A refers to non-right angled triangles. Note that according to this triangle, uh, the opposite side of angle C, you probably can't see it on my one though, the opposite side of angle C, angle C is up here, the opposite side, what is it labelled? And you've probably seen it below, it's labelled little c. Um, the opposite side of angle B, so here's angle B, opposite side, what is it labelled with? It's labelled with little b, lowercase b. And the opposite side of angle A is labelled lowercase a. So that's how we sort of set up. That's where the number, that's where the letters A, B and C come from. And remember angles, we use capital letters for angles and we use lowercase letters for sides. Now what you're asked to do is divide this triangle into two right angle triangles by drawing a dotted vertical line, which I've done already, a dotted vertical line through the triangle. And you're asked to label this dotted vertical line H for height. So see effectively what we've done is we've divided this non right angle triangle into two separate right angle triangles by drawing this vertical line through here, which I labelled H for height. So see we make a right angle triangle here and it generates a right angle triangle over here as well. Now we're going to use Sokotoa um, trigonometric ratios to complete the formula below for the right angle triangle on the left. So by that we mean this right angle triangle here. We're talking about this right angle triangle. Um, so according to the right angle triangle, the sin of A, remember sin refers to opposite over hypotenuse. So the sin of A means its opposite side over its hypotenuse. So notice the opposite side is H and the hypotenuse is B. So we can just say the sin of A is a H over B. Notice I'm using lowercase b because we're talking about a side length, not an angle. Uppercase letters refer to angles. So sin of A equals H over B. Um, and our next step is you're asked to rearrange each of the above formulas, so just basically rearrange the above formula, to make H the subject. So notice it's H divided by B on this side, so we need to multiply both sides by B. And how do we write that? We write H equals, when you multiply H over B by B, the B will cancel out. Multiply sin of A by B, the way we write that is we write B sin A. We don't write sin, sin of A times B, we should write B sin A. Uh, so now we've come up with a formula for the height B sin A, and looking at the formula for area of a triangle, you're probably sort of seeing where the B and the sin A come from. It's coming from the height of the triangle. Uh, now substitute the above formula for the height into the formula for the area of the triangle at the top of the page. So area of a triangle, remember it's half base times height. So we're going to sub in that the height is B sin A. And height, sub in height is B sin A. So first of all, let's just rewrite the formula again in general. Half base times height. Um, so what is the base of the triangle? Notice that the base of the triangle is just the length C. So the base of the triangle... So it's half C, because the base is C, and the height, remember, is B sin A. So half C multiplied by B sin A, but let's make it look a bit more sophisticated. We don't want to have the multiply sign in there. So we, if we do half of C times B sin A, you can change that into 
half BC, sin A. And so when you simplify it all, you get half BC, because notice I just put it in alphabetical order, BC times sin of A. And this is the version that appears in your formula booklet. Like on the exam, basically, you get given this version of the formula. So it's half BC times sin of A. Um, okay, so now let's move on to some practical examples on the next page. So find the area of the following triangle. So what's important is, like, you could label, like, you know, capital A, capital B, capital C, and label all the sides as well. But as I've written here, the most important thing is, so long as you have um, two sides, either side of the included angle, so you're good to go. So that's a little tip. So long as you have the two sides next to the angle, you're good to go. So at this one, we've got the angle in the middle of two sides. So just go straight into plugging into the formula if you like. So it's half the two sides BC. Doesn't matter which one's which because you're multiplying them. So half 20 by 18 uh, sin of 54. You don't need to write the degrees. Um, so area equals half BC sin A. Again, it doesn't matter so long as you've got sides either side of the included angle. So so long as you have the two sides either side of the angle, you're good to go. Go straight to plugging it in like this. Use your brackets to show your substitution. And then just throw it into the calculator. Make sure your mode is in degrees in this case. And you can plug it in straight like that if you want. Or instead of half, you can put 0.5. And if you try putting the calculator now, um, so you can practice finding where sin is on the calculator, remember you press the trig button if it's a TI Inspire. And round your answer to three sig figs. So you get 146. And remember we're talking about areas now. So remember for um, units are squared. So you might want to make the little note, units are squared for area. Now let's go into the other example below. Um, the area of the illustrated rose garden is 127.3 metres squared, so we've been told the answer already. We want to find x, and x is the missing side. So, just reminding us the area formula, a half equals a, b sin c. I'll write that down to get started. Now we already know what the area is, so let's substitute that in. It's 127.3. We know that one of the sides, it could be a, it could be b, doesn't matter because they're being multiplied is 18, the other one is x. So equals a half, 18, and then notice I just sub in x for the other side. A half bc, or a, a b sin c, doesn't matter to be honest. Um, sin 45. The main thing is you've just got to have two sides and the angle in the middle. So a half, two sides multiplied together, sin of the angle, and now it's a bit tricky, we've got to solve for x, so we've got to divide off everything else. So we can do this in steps if you want. Um, so we can say, we can just work out what half of 18 is if you like. So half of 18 is 9, so we just worked out half of 18 is 9. So we've still got x sin 45 going on there. But now we need to rearrange. And what else do we have to do? We have to solve for x. So rearrange and solve for x. So we have to divide off 9 sin 45 to get x by itself. We need to divide off 9 sin 45. So we can write it as 127.3 divided by 9 sin 45. See, we've just divided off the 9 sin 45 from both sides. Equals x. And you can plug it in the calculator like this. You can make your nice fractions. Use the fraction button to get nice fractions. Then do 127.3 divided by 9 sin 45. And make sure, your, of course, your mode is in degrees. So three sig figs, you should hopefully get 20.0 metres. And because it's not an area we're asked to calculate, we're just asked to calculate a side length. So it's just metres. It's not metres squared this time. Go into some more examples, moving along. Uh, again, find the area of the following triangles. Let's see, have we got the two sides and an angle in between? Uh, yes, we do. So we can go straight to subbing it in. Area equals a half of the two sides multiplied together. So 11.7 multiplied by 8.4. 
Don't forget, it's multiplied then by the sin of 31. And then you can just throw it in the calculator like this. Instead of using a half, you can use 0.5. But I would recommend plugging it in like this. You know how to make fractions anyway. And hopefully when you do that, you get 25.3 centimetres squared because you've got um, talking about area. So you need to um, round to three sig figs and have square units. And notice it was centimetres up here, so centimetres squared for area down below. So that was a nice straightforward one. Again, determine the area of the triangle. Again, we've got, notice, two sides, and we've got the angle in between. The angle has to be in between the two sides. You can't use this side. It has to be these two sides and the angle in between. So plug it all in. Area equals a half. The two sides are multiplied together using your parentheses. And then sin of the angle, sin of 30. Plug that into your calculator. Try it out. Maybe you want to pause and just plug it into your calculator now see if you're getting the right answers and you get 14 try to think what the units would be its area so it will be kilometers squared or square kilometers now let's move on to some trickier examples so we've got a rhombus these kind of parallelograms and um, we've got a rhombus turning up now so a rhombus has side lengths of 14 centimeters remember a rhombus is like a square it's kind of been tipped sideways so all four sides are equal. So all four sides of the rhombus have to equal 14 centimetres. And an angle of 68 degrees, find the area of the rhombus. So you probably also remember that if it's a rhombus, it can be divided into four equal sized right angle triangles. Um, alternatively, just try drawing it and see what happens. So we don't necessarily have to deal with right angle triangles if we're using this non right angle triangle area formula. So here's a picture of a rhombus. So rhombus can be divided into four equal sized right angle triangles. Could also be divided into, in this case, uh, two triangles of equal area. So that's what I've chosen to do. I've just taken the rhombus, I've drawn it, marked in the all four sides of 14. I've marked in one of the angles is 68. And when I divide it in two, I just realize I can just easily work out this area here using the area of a non-right angle triangle formula. I don't even have to divide it into four this time because we've got two sides and we've got the angle in between if we're using this triangle here. So let's work out the area of the triangle. And of course, to get the area of the rhombus, we just have to double it. So area of the triangle, also, just if this helps, area of the triangle, I've just drawn out what one of those triangles would be. That helps you at all so this triangle here i've just redrawn so we're going to first of all down here we're going to work out the area of this triangle using half two sides multiplied together sin of the angle so if the triangle equals a half 14 by 14 because they're the same side length sin of 68 now you might want to pause and plug that into your calculator and when you do that you hopefully get this answer um notice that um, we haven't quoted the final answer yet, so you shouldn't round this to three sig figs yet. Um, it's, we want to find the final answer should be the area of the rhombus, so don't round your answers until you get to the final answer. So keep the non-rounded answer in your calculator. And of course the area of the rhombus will just be double this. So make yourself write this all out. Area of the rhombus will be two times because there's one triangle here and one triangle here. So it'll just be double the area of one triangle. Um, and when you double the area of one triangle, hopefully you get this answer when you round it to three sig figs. And again, it's an area, so it's 182, and it was originally centimetres for the length, so centimetres squared for the areas. And down below to one last little example before we do our summary on the next page. So example, a parallelogram, this time has side lengths of five and nine and an angle of 47. So it's probably sounding pretty similar to the above example. Find the area of the parallelogram. A hint, you might like to draw the diagram first. So let's draw our parallelogram in and let's mark in the angles and the sides. So parallelogram is like a rectangle. It's kind of got tilted over to one side. It's got a length of nine and a length of five and an angle of 47. So you notice I put the angle 47 here because that's the acute angle. I didn't mark in 47 on the obtuse angle because that wouldn't make sense. So 47 I popped in for the acute angle 
And again, you can split it, the parallelogram in half. So we've got two triangles of equal area. And I'm going to draw one of them out just to demonstrate what one of them would look like. You don't have to draw it out again if you don't want, but just pointing out that this triangle here can be written out like that. Now we can work out its area using the area of a non right angle triangle formula because we've got two sides and the angle in between those two sides. We can't be using this side, it has to be the two sides that are either side of the angle. So let's start to plug in those two lengths. So again, it's half, two lengths multiplied together. Stin of 47. Now, if you want, pause and plug that into your calculator and write out the unrounded answer because we want the final answer to be for the parallelogram, not just the triangle. So write out to lots of decimal places is a good idea. So the parallelogram, notice there's one triangle is equal to about 16.4 blah blah uh, centimetres squared. So the whole parallelogram will just be double that. So you might want to write that out. Two times all of that. Uh, in your calculator, if you round that to three sig figs, hopefully you get 32.9. What are the units? Initially, there were lengths with centimetres, so our area unit should be centimetres squared. So be very strict with writing your units and your final answers being three sig figs. Now the next page is just a little summary page. Um, so in summary, when labelling the side lengths and vertices of a non-right angled triangle, sorry, non-right angled, oops, non-right angled, I'll just change that, so non-right angled, you fix yours too. So when labelling the side lengths and vertices, like the corners, of a non-right angled triangle, the side opposite angle A is labelled, you probably remember lowercase a, the side opposite angle B is labelled lowercase b, and the side opposite angle C is labelled um, C. And let, maybe let's do a little diagram as well. So I just did a non-right angle triangle, labelled the angles big A, big B, capital C. So opposite to angle A should be the side A, opposite angle B should be side B, and opposite angle C should be side C. Moving along, we're finding the area of a non-right angled triangle. Uh, and moving along, when finding the area of a non-right angled triangle, the angle you use must be the one which is something the two given side lengths. So the angle you use must be the one that's in between the two side lengths. So in other words, if we're using if we're given B and C, we need to use angle A. If we're using given A and B, we need to use angle C. If we're given A and C, we need to use angle B when finding the area. Um, units for area are always squared. I know that seems simple, but a lot of people forget that in their answers. Um, and when solving for an unknown length, if you're given the area, you need to, so like we did before, if you're given the area, you need to rearrange um, the formula and solve for x. So that was an example, remember before when we were given the area 127.3 and we had to sub in the area and, start, and sub in the other values and start to rearrange and solve for x is what we had to do. Um, when solving for an unknown angle though, it's a bit tricky, if you're given the area you need to so we might not have seen one like this, so I'll do a little example as well. So rearrange the formula and solve for theta. So we probably didn't do one of those examples, so I'll do one with you right now. So solving for an unknown angle. So again, remember, area is just half AB sin C. So we did an example of solving for a side, but we haven't done one of solving for an angle. Um, so imagine like you were just asked to solve for C. So one thing you could do, Dividing by a half is the same as timesing by two. So if you were to divide off a half from both sides, then that's the same as multiplying both sides by two. So that gets rid of the half because it's been canceled out when you divide it off. So that leaves you with a, b, sin, c, and you've got two a over here. Um, then what we'd have to do is we're trying to solve for c. So I would suggest divide off the a, b from both sides first. So go two a, divide by a, b which will cancel out the AB on this side, so you'll be left with sin C. And then remember to 
um, the reverse, the inverse step of um, sine of C is sine of negative 1. So C equals sine of negative 1, all of this stuff here. Sine of negative 1, 2A over AB. Um, so that would be in general how you would do it, but you would have numbers here, of course, probably, and sort of work it out that way. Um, and that's kind of the end of this particular lesson on area of formula for a non-right angle triangle. You can use that area formula for right angle triangles too, but you can also use half base times height for right angle triangles. But this one is just one that can also be used for non-right angle triangles.